So far what we know is we know about alkanes, uh, cycloalkanes and alkyl halides. So we've got a pretty solid understanding of how organic compounds are put together. We also know about functional groups, so we know what an alkene is. What we want to do is we want to kind of step back a little bit and then grab hold of alkenes and then move forward. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some of the same things we've already done. We've done we're going to do nomenclature, we're going to do isomers. Uh, we won't really talk that much about the chemical properties of alkenes because that comes up a little bit later. But what we do want to do is see how uh, what we already know fits with the this new little piece of alkenes. So to Take a step back and look at hydrocarbons, compounds that involve hydrogen and carbon. Uh, we have alkanes so far, and then we've got pentane with C5H12, five carbons, 12 hydrogens. If we were to uh, lose a couple of hydrogens, and I, I want to emphasize this is not how alkenes are actually formed, where we physically remove two hydrogens, although there are reactions that can accomplish that, that would leave us with uh, two carbons that are short of bonds, so they're gonna, if they're right beside each other, they'll form a bond with each other. So in other words, every time a bond is broken, depending on how it's broken, but in this one, um, the bond is a shared electron pair between hydrogen and carbon. If hydrogen takes its electron and goes home, carbon is left with a, an electron that needs a bond, and then the carbon beside it, same thing, they bond with each other, forming an alkene. Now again, that's not how these things actually form, generally speaking, but it's instructive at this point. Um, if we took two more hydrogens off of that system and did exactly the same thing, I won't do it as long this time, we would end up with an alkyne, uh, five carbons, eight hydrogens. Now we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time with alkynes in terms of the nomenclature, uh, a little bit with the reactions, I suppose, but really not a whole lot. We're gonna understand, uh, sort of recognize the functional group, but uh, really that's about the end of it. We can also, if I uh, left those, all of those hydrogens where they were on the chain, sorry, I left one of those boxes there, and I took the two away on the ends, uh, I could wrap that around and form a cycloalkane. Okay, so those are the different ways that if I'm missing hydrogens from a straight chain alkane, uh, I can deal with it. So that's helpful, that's instructive when we talk about isomers. I can also, uh, if I lost hydrogens from the middle and from the end, I can have a cycloalkene. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time with those things, uh, although I think what would happen is after we spend some time with alkanes, cycloalkanes, and alkenes, you could step into cycloalkenes quite easily. Okay, general formulas. We don't need to know these. I'm never going to, well, I won't say I'm never going to ask you what the formula is, but if I do, you can always figure it out on the fly. Um, this is sort of helpful if we, for, for doing isomers, but it's not really all that, that useful all by itself. But if I have an alkane, if you look at any alkane, for any number of carbons that I have, I've got twice as many hydrogens plus two. And if you think about that, every middle carbon on a straight chain alkane is CH2, 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 and the two on the end are CH3s. So I have two ends, so that's my plus two. If I have an alkene or a cycloalkane, well, in the previous picture, uh, we took two hydrogens away. So now I'm down to, for the number of hydrogens, sorry, the number of carbons that I have, I've got twice as many hydrogens. With an alkyne or a cycloalkene, I took away two more hydrogens, so I'm at twice as many carbons. Sorry, twice as many hydrogens, did it again, minus two. So if you think of the, the, uh, the alkyne that was there, the triple bond, that was five carbons and eight hydrogens. Okay, there's another group of uh, hydrocarbons that are kind of special, and they're called the aromatics. And they have a very, very unique set of nomenclature, a very, very unique set of, of properties. Uh, they, they, the whole understanding of them developed kind of independently, so they've got a completely different way of doing most things. But they are all based on um, a, the compound called benzene. And benzene is this carbon uh, hydrocarbon where you have an alternating carbon carbon single bond followed by a carbon carbon double bond and that goes around in a six membered ring everything we know about alkenes uh, tells us that this thing should behave in a certain way with three carbon carbon double bonds and it does not 
So it was a really, really uh, unique set of, of compounds uh, known as, the, as the, uh, the, the aromatics. We'll often draw benzene in this way in that slightly shorter uh, version where it's this six-membered ring with alternating single double bonds. And then there's a whole other family or a, a, a much larger family of compounds based on that. Very fascinating. We may get to, to see a little bit of it, but probably not a whole lot. Um, in terms of the, the isers, uh, isers, isomers of alkenes, all of the structural stuff that we have, we can still do. But there's a, an interesting one here with um, what's called geometric isomers. And if you start with an alkane, there is rotation around that bond. So if you took one finger to another finger, you could rotate without hurting anything, without, you know, as long as you had the coordination, you could turn around there without any difficulty. But if you had a double bond, two fingers, you cannot rotate, you know, thumbs both up to one thumb up, one thumb down. You cannot rotate without breaking something. Same thing is true with a, an alkene. And that means that if you had a uh, groups on opposite carbons of the carbon-carbon double bond, they are going to either be on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond or on opposite sides. Um, they have special names. Uh, so when they're on the same side like that, that's called uh, it's the cis isomer, and on the other side it's called the trans isomer. And I finally caught up. So the cis and trans. So um, we would then denote that in the nomenclature. Now we're not going to get too worried about cis and trans isomers in uh, alkenes, uh, other than to know that they're, they're a possibility. They do have a really big, important role to play in a lot of things in uh, biology and in society. Uh, so if you've ever heard of trans fatty acids uh, or trans fats in foods, that is what is that, that is being referred to is uh, how the arrangement around the double bond is. They also have a role to play in vision. So when light hits your eye, uh, that light energy excites an, uh, the electron in an atom, moves up to a higher energy level, but it also causes a double bond to flip from being a cis arrangement to a trans arrangement, and then the machinery of your eye. I know machinery is the wrong word, but machinery of your eye goes into to, to play to flip it back to where it was so that it can do it again. Okay, alkene nomenclature. This is where we are going to spend some time. All we really have to do is take exactly the same principles that we had for alkane, our basic nomenclature, and tweak it. One of the things is the root name is going to end in E-N-E. -E. So instead of an ethane, it's an ethene. Instead of a propane, propene. Um, the numbering gives that carbon-carbon double bond priority because that changes the functional group. So it's more important than a carbon group. It's more important than a chloro group. And then the position of the double bond is going to need to be uh, stated. So where is the double bond? So in this example here, um, you're going to start the numbering from the right. So the carbon-carbon double bond starts at carbon number two. We only really have to worry about the starting point of that carbon-carbon double bond at carbon number two. So we would call this then a pent two ene. Um, slightly older uh, way of naming that would be a two pentene. So you'll still see that sometimes where the position number is out in front. So the root name would be two pentene. A more modern um, and slowly taking over version is pent two ene. So the two drops right in front of the thing it's referring to, which kind of makes sense, but it's a bit more awkward. In this one, uh, I've got a chlorine group on the one end, I've got a carbon group closer to the left end, but I've got the double bond closer to the right end. So double bond takes priority, and that would be a 5-chloro, 4-methyl, pent 2-ene. So our root name is the same as the previous one. Uh, and then, but notice that the same thing happens. Number, group, number, what it's referring to, as much as possible. Again, in an older system of nomenclature, you would find that as a 5-chloro-4-methyl-2-pentene, and that's probably what I'm more used to, so if you wrote that, I'd probably be okay with that, but this is what you're seeing, and this is what I'm going to try and uh, focus on. Okay, isomers. Well, if you were asked to draw isomers of 5 carbons, 10 hydrogens, you would probably want to start out the same way of doing things is straight chain. You would get to a certain point where you're counting out the hydrogens and realize you don't have enough hydrogens. Okay, so now I can make a double bond. 
and then I want to do exactly the same thing. I want to move that double bond. I can move the double bond uh, once or twice and then I'm kind of stuck. So then what do I do? I, same thing, make the chain shorter, put a branch. And then I can start that process over. But here's the nice thing. Not only can I move the branch, but I can move the double bond and then move the branch. So I can, I've got two things I'm now moving. So it opens up a whole lot more possibilities. So with five carbons and 10 hydrogens, there's actually a lot more isomers than you might have, well, far more than you would have gotten from five carbons and 12 hydrogens, the alkane. And uh, so we do the same thing, move the branch, uh, move the bond. And then of course, because alkenes and cycloalkanes are isomers, I could start it over with a carbon-carbon, sorry, a uh, cycloalkane. And then I could make the al cycloalkane, the ring a little bit shorter, and put a branch on it. So I've got lots more possibilities. Whew. Okay, uh, at this point, obviously you should be able to recognize an alkene. You should be able to do most of the nomenclature of an alkene. And even, I know we didn't go from the name to the structure, but I, I think once you know how to do name to structure of anything, the name structure of an alkene is gonna be pretty straightforward. You should also be able to draw some isomers of, of uh, alkenes. And then, whatever else we get to do with them, um, they are gonna be, alkenes are gonna be really, really important for us in terms of being able to do the chemistry. They're quite a reactive uh, functional group, so they're really important for that. Anyway, talk to you another time.